A recap of last night's historic win for the Miami Heat over the Indiana Pacers, along with the two performances that really fueled them to that win. All that and more on this episode of Heat Digest. If you haven't already, like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Heat. Now let's get to it. First things first, the major win for the Miami Heat. What happened? Well, last night the Miami Heat hosted the Indiana Pacers in a a back and forth brawl of an NBA game. It ended 73-64 at the half. The Pacers were up. The Miami Heat couldn't stop anybody on their team, to be honest with you. Tyrese Halliburton got off to an amazing start, hitting five threes in the first quarter. He ended with 44-10. and And it looked like the Miami Heat weren't going to be able to get a win here, as they couldn't defend anybody. What well, as the time went on and the game went on, back and forth, punches being thrown on both sides, getting through the game... It ended 142-132 for the Miami Heat as a victor. Now, how was it historic? Well, back and forth as they went, they got to the fourth quarter, and the Miami Heat had a 45-point fourth quarter, the second most all-time only behind the New York Knicks back in the 80s. An absolute historic performance from the Miami Heat. Now, going into that, now going into this game, I told you guys, I thought the Miami Heat had a real chance at winning this game despite playing the number one offense in the NBA. And I thought that was because of our defense. Well, come to find out, we didn't play any defense. But guess what? Neither did the Indiana Pacers, who are ranked 30th now in the NBA in total defense. If we look at the numbers, the Pacers played better defense on via on the paper than we did. We look at the steals, it was 11-4 for the Indiana Pacers. We look at the blocks, it was 5-1 to for the Pacers. We look at the total turnovers, it was 10-14 to in favor of the Pacers. But when looking at all of that, I want you to look at the points off of the turnovers. Now, the Indiana Pacers caused 14 total turnovers for the Miami Heat. They only turned that into 10 points. For the Miami Heat, they caused 10 turnovers, and they turned that into 22 points. One of the biggest differences in the entire game. Now, going on, there's two more stats I really wanted to cover. And one of them I'm going to plug into one of the key performances I was alluding to in the beginning. The first being the rebounds. We out-rebounded the Indiana Pacers 34-48. to The offensive rebounds were split 10-10 for each team. But overall, we won the rebounding battle 48-34. to Now... If you don't know anything about NBA basketball or basketball in general, if you dominate the glass, there is a good chance that you will win the game. The reason being is when you get a rebound, you're taking a possession away from the opposing team and giving your team another possession. Now, going into that, let's look back at this graphic. The last stat I really want to acknowledge is the free throw percentage and the total free throws taken for the Indiana Pacers. They went 21 of 32 from the free throw line. They left 11 points at the line. They only shot 65% overall from the free throw line. That will not get it done in the NBA. There is not a chance. For the Miami Heat, they shot 38 of 45, which is 84% from the free throw line. Absolutely ridiculous numbers. Now, those two performances I was alluding to earlier... Let's talk about Jimmy Butler. He shot 20 free throws by himself, going 18 of 20 from the line. Absolutely ridiculous stuff from Jimmy Butler in his first game back since four games prior when he left with an ankle injury post-game against the New York Knicks. In this game back, he had 36 points. He had 11 rebounds and 3 assists. An absolutely bonkers performance from the Jimmy Butler An all-star performance from Jimmy Butler in his first game back, acting like he never left. Now, talking about this second performance that fueled this one for the Miami Heat, let's get to it. It's a rookie. Here comes the rook. Jamie Haquez Jr. If that name sounds familiar, it's because I just praised him yesterday, talking about how, with all of these injuries to Duncan Robinson, Hayward Highsmith, Jimmy Butler... Tyler Hero, all of these players, RJ Hampton, Josh Richards, Richardson, all of these players are were day, were listed as day to day. They we did we thought they were going to come back uh, for the game on November 29th. They didn't. Bam was by himself. Ended up they all came back last night in this game against the Indiana Pacers. Well, 
You know who also showed up? Jamie Haquez Jr. He showed up once again, playing 33 minutes, went 8 of 13 from the field shooting. That's 72%. He went 1 for 3 behind the three-point line, 7 of 7 from the free throw line, and he had 24 total points. But what they won't tell you is that he had 14 of those 24 in the fourth quarter. He had them early in the fourth as the Miami Heat were down 13 going into that quarter. Jamie Hakez Jr. really fueled that 45-point quarter for the Miami Heat, resulting in a historic performance and a historic win in the Miami Heat for the Miami Heat. Along with those 24 points, he had five rebounds, one assist, a steal, and his plus-minus was plus 18. Absolutely ridiculous numbers from a rookie. Like I told you guys yesterday, I thought that there was a good chance that despite these players coming back in this game, he was still going to get the number or still going to get the uh, minutes played. With those minutes played, it would be up to him to perform up to par. And going into the fourth quarter, he was shaky. He he really, like I said, he had 14 of his 24 in the fourth. He only had 10, 10 points going into the fourth quarter. When that fourth quarter started, he had those 14 points. He had an and-one layup, a huge momentum swing, along with an alley-oop dunk. Oh, I'm all over the place. On, I believe it was Bruce Brown, running the floor after a good defensive possession by the Miami Heat, resulting in an electric momentum-swinging dunk for Jamie Harquez Jr. just to put a cherry on top of the performance he had already had up until that point in the fourth quarter. An absolute masterclass performance by the Miami Heat, a historic performance by the Miami Heat, and nothing but optimism coming from me, and it should be from the rest of the fans, as we have watched Jamie Hakez Jr. really come into his own, and despite all of the stars coming back, despite Jimmy Butler being at the forefront and being in all at the all-star level we know and love from him, Bam Adebayo didn't have the greatest game, as he did get the help he needed, so it wasn't really required. But Duncan Robinson came back, another guard. Kyle Lowry played great. He shot 60% and had what he had 15 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Josh Richardson, eight of eleven from the field, made three of four free throws, had 19 points, three assists, and four rebounds. But it all comes down to Jamie Haquez Jr. as he simply outperformed really. The expectations I even put on him, as I said yesterday, I thought there was a good chance he would play really well in this matchup as they were playing a team who was ranked 29th in total defense, and the only reason they weren't 30th was because the Washington Wizards had played two more games than them, but they had averaged the same amount of points given up. And after last night's performance, it's safe to say that they are definitely, statistically, the worst defense in the NBA. Now, to close it out, it's... It's a win for the Miami Heat on the scorecard because we did beat the Indiana Pacers, but it's also a win everywhere else. We won with Jamie Hakez Jr. with such a masterclass performance, really stepping up and showing his true colors that he's not shying away from the moment. It doesn't matter if it's the first quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter, that he is capable and willing to step up and really perform. Along with a win, seeing Jimmy Butler come back and play exceptionally well, 36-11, and 11, 18 of 20 from the free throw line is just it almost seems like 2K numbers, to be honest with with you. Along with uh, Duncan Robinson's return and Josh Richard, uh, yeah, Josh Richardson's performance. Absolutely, win after win after win after win for the Miami Heat. Overall, I think that might be one of the better wins for the Miami Heat this up to this point in the season. And I can't wait to see where it goes next. Look out for more videos coming here soon, as Demar Derozan might be landing in Miami. We'll see. Remember, like and subscribe. Stay up to date on all things heat. Thanks. Have a great day.